everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly. Today is a new pen day for me. I ordered a new pen a few weeks back and it has arrived from, as you can tell, Amazon. Let's not stand on any ceremony here because I am super excited to unbox get this pen inked up and give it a test drive. I already cut off the end of the bag. Ash bag. And that's how eager I am, I wasn't thinking. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. This is Kaweco pen. I bought it from Amazon instead of one of the usual online pen, fountain pen specialty shops. It was at a really good price, so I'm hoping this is gonna work out. I'm always skeptical about buying a pen that is normally like $150 to $180, and then I see it for $70. I start to wonder, you know, what the quality is. Is it the real thing? Is it a knockoff? What am I going to get? Let's take a look. Oh, it looks good. This looks like the real deal packaging. And it is a Kaweco product. I'm never sure, is it Kaweco with a W, with a w or is it Kaweco? Because I think, being as a, it's a German brand, it's Kaweco. But correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. I don't want to make too big of an idiot out of myself pronouncing it wrong for the next 10 years every time I open one of these pens. Ooh. Okay, well, the usual warranties, his little history of the pen company, Ooh, a little sticker. And let's take a look at our pen. Now this is the, the Caveco Supra in brass. It is a fine. It's got that nice rounded bullet. Boy, it looks the same coming and going almost. I like that the way that looks. It's very hefty being brass. Let's take a look here at the nib. Ooh, that's lovely. Focus. Stainless steel nib. And what makes this the Supra is the fact that you can actually take out this middle section of the pen. Screw this part back on. Well, if you take out the <laughs> ink cartridge that comes with it, screw this back on and you have yourself a little brass mini pen, a pocket pen. I liked that option a lot. And let's see, yep. And that's what we get when it's taken down a size. Very smooth finish on that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep that middle section in. I, I like it as a larger pen, but it's nice to have that option. And I also want to make sure that the brass patinas, that we don't have a evenly, that we don't have a section that I leave out for so long that the rest of the pen has begun to patina and no longer <laughs> looks the same as the rest of the pen. Yep, I have that on there correctly. Okay. There she is in all her glory. Let's go ahead and ink this up. I'm gonna fill the cartridge. I think I have a converter, an extra Kaveco converter somewhere, but I didn't look for it before I started to film. So we're gonna fill up that empty cartridge that was in here with this lovely ink. I've already selected it. This is by a company called Teranishi. It's their guitar ink line in nostalgic 
Honey, I love the boxes on these inks. They're all different and I feel like this one's very suitable. Just to give you an idea of what a swatch of that looks like, I believe I have a swatch of it in here in my little in my little book. Where did that gun it? Helps if you turn it right side up, jeez. There it is. There it is. I think that'll look real pretty in that brass pen. Okay, let's give that a shot. Probably a good idea to have a few paper towels. Since I am kind of a clumsy, messy individual a lot of the time. <laughs> okay, let's put our little syringe together. I got this from Jet Pens. They come in a whole kit. It doesn't take a very big pull on this syringe to get enough ink to fill this almost all the way up. Pull everything else together. Okay, let's just pop that back in there. Got a nice solid fit. I guess I could have taken the middle part off too, just to make sure that it fits in there nice and solid. Okay, now I gotta let the dog in because he's barking it through the window at me. Hang on just a second. Were you getting wet? I'm sorry. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Oh, there's the boy. There's the boy. Yeah, good boy. Silly monkey. Silly monkey bear. Okay, where was I? Okay, make sure that... I believe that's a international cartridge. Whoop. Helps if you put it back together correctly. Maybe. Is that the right way to do that? I'm like, now I'm second guessing myself all over the place. I'm like, do I have this on right? Do I? Okay, hang on. There. <laughs> so there is a way you can put it together incorrectly, just so you know. Oh, uh, go figure that I would initially put this whole thing back. Good thing it only comes in a few pieces and by trial and error I can kind of be like oh this doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't fit as neatly back together as I thought it would. Oh hey and look <laughs> I was wondering oh my gosh how am I going to post that? Uh, yeah well it screws on to the back if you want to post it. That way you're not scratching your brass pen by cramming the lid on, cr cramming the cap on, it actually screws very neatly onto the back. Boy, that is, you can get pretty tired riding with this for after a while. It is, it is very heavy. I have a couple of metal pens and I think I'm like trying to determine between this and like the pilot vanishing point, the one in matte black that I liked, this is, this feels initially like it is considerably heavier than that. Let me, let me get it so we have a bit of a comparison. Hang on. This, um, pilot vanishing point is one of my everyday carries. I use it a lot at work. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh yeah. It's definitely heavier, for sure, for sure. I don't know if I'd be able to write with this for very long before my hands started to cramp up. I tend to, uh, I really grip my pens, thus the <laughs> little bump right there on my knuckle from having gripped and pressing so hard. I'm a very heavy-handed writer, and I've had to really train myself with fountain pens because you don't need to press 
a fountain pen down for it to uh, for it to write like you sometimes do with ballpoints and other it's gravity flow it will flow if it's not obstructed and you put it to the paper you don't have to press so I've had to really train myself not to duh, it's because that's a real good way to to ruin your nibs bye bye favorite pen and favorite pen case nice seeing you let's take it for a writing test run. This is a little Hobonichi A6 size. It's the day free. Now I did not flush this pen. That is a very bad habit of mine where I don't clean or flush a pen and then I, you know, immediately expect it to start writing even though it could have goop old dried ink from the factory in it still but you know I'm just like over eager for for it to work for me and it's not working for me <laughs> figure uh, I think I'm gonna use my little pencil board that I cut from a larger pencil board yeah, my hand's already getting tired. Already getting tired from it resting so heavily on against this muscle right here. I feel like I need to take my hand through some stretching exercises. It's already kind of cramping up, but it sure looks pretty. And I do wonder too, um, comparatively to the other brass pens made by Kaveco, like the Sport, uh, how much it weighs compared to that. I might actually look and see if I can find something on how many grams this pen weighs versus the brass Quebec of Sport or other brass pens like the the Travelers Company brass pen. Let's reduce the weight. We can we can do that, you know, by taking out this middle section. You know, and I could leave the cap off too. And have it weigh quite a bit less. Still hefty. It does reduce the weight a little bit. Um, and it's still a fairly good sized pen with the cap screwed on the back. With it off, that's for me. And I know my hands, I got man hands for a woman. For me, that's, that's really too small. That's too small to use without the cap on the back. just to stop again and address the weight and the balance of this thing. For some reason, the sensation is that, and maybe it's the angle in which I'm holding the pen, but it really pulls forward. Like it's trying to get out of my grip. Like if I loosen it, it's just gonna skitter out of my grip across the page. I don't know why it's, why that sensation, I, I don't think it's just the weight or maybe it's how it's balanced. I'm not sure, but it gives me this sensation like it makes me grip it even harder because it feels as I'm writing like it's trying, almost trying to get away, <laughs> get away from me. And that seems, that's a strange thing to say, I know, but that's how it feels as I'm writing. I would say that as beautiful as this pen is in its short version and in its longer version with this middle section in there, I don't think this is going to be a long-term keeper for me. After having it for a few months, maybe a little longer, I may find that I curate this out of my collection. I really would like to have an example of a brass pen though in my fountain pen collection. It's not a must have, it is a luxury. I mean, this is a hobby. I collect these for fun. This would just be personal preference. It writes great. It's It's got some great adaptability to it, which is fun. Love that brass. The nib is very smooth. I don't have any complaints really about the way it writes so much except for the weight and that weird sensation of it like 
trying to get away from me <laughs> a little bit. I'll have to write with it a little bit more to see if that discomfort um, wanes at all, but right now I would say it's a wonderful pen for someone, but just maybe not for me. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for joining me for another new pen day. Leave a like and comment below if you'd like to. I love sharing my love of fountain pens with anyone and everyone. See you back here again real soon. Bye now.